Township Board of Trustees, August 19th meeting, 2024. And I would entertain a motion for adoption of the minutes from August 5th. So moved. And that's with the correction message? Yes. I second. And my corrections too? As well, yes. Good. You should see yours. Oh, we're too stables. Oh, they were terrible. I should. <laughs> Over there? No, there was, there was a typo. Right, Brian House. Poor Brian. I know. Um, please, could we have a small civil? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to defend the poor guy. Uh, please call the roll. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of August 5th, 2024, as corrected earlier. Uh, Mr. Moser. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Minutes are adopted. Entertain a motion to approve payment of bills totaling $29,578.09 from the general fund, $4,433.89 from cemetery. $2,100.56 from fire, $18,964.02 from road, $4,079.62. I move that we pay our bills. Second. Uh, this has got to be the lowest amount I've seen in a while. So I'm set the really high one on last time. <laughs> uh, any discussion besides that snarky comment? Not I. Gina, how current are we on paying bills? Um, we're still doing some catch up. Mm -hmm. um, Nothing that they're going to shut our lights off with anything. No. no. Um, and some of it goes on with reporting. So that's what I was just on the phone with now, up to date for the like, OPERS and all that. So payments will go with that, and that'll probably be reflected in the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I just, if you're doing electric, electric, electronic okay. fund transfer, no, electronic. Yeah, 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 no. geez, yeah. Yeah, if you're doing those, have you started doing some of those? Yes. Is but there a how to get them to you? Is that your question? Uh, you yeah, some kind of paper trail or or to have the original bill with this EFT yes. sheet on it so we can see it. Yeah. Great. We'll do. We have that number we talk about that thing now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? No. Please call it all. It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of twenty nine thousand five seventy eight oh nine as enumerated. <clears throat> Ms. Moyer? Yes, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Motion is approved. Uh, I reviewed our table of correspondence. I didn't see anything. Merits going on the agenda. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, Anyone from the public have something they'd like to put on the agenda tonight? I'd Fred? like to just ask a question. You passed your um, payment of bills motion, and I see in the notes that you have told me all the expenses. You've listed them, except uh, 2021 and 2031 are not dates, of course. They're some kind of account. And I don't know what those are for. Those are a subset of the road. Oh, okay. Those two added together equal the road amount. Yes, if you add those together, you get the line above it. Oh, okay. And there are account numbers associated with a certain kind of expense. Yes, and I don't need to know that. I'll but I just, out. I just I'm happy to do it after the meeting. Show okay. you. This. Yeah, I'm just trying to learn. Please. Well, we do have, uh, we've advertised a public hearing 
on a zoning resolution change uh, that we're titling self-generated solar. Uh, it's not very long. Any objection to my reading this? Why don't you formally open the hearing first? Uh, I've done this so few, many times, so few. I would like to open this hearing on uh, a change in the, our zoning, I would call it zoning code, but technically it's zoning resolution. Uh, and it's an addition. It's, it's an addition to a series of sections and it's primarily defining solar self-generation. Uh, I don't think to go very far, I might as well read it. Yes, and <clears throat> tell what, is, what form should this should a hearing take? What's you're opening a hearing on what? Yeah, sure. I mean, you, you make the introduction, you, you present the time, roughly, you know, 507, something like that. It's 508. Uh, or 508, um, as you will, and then you say, uh, anyone who wishes to speak, and if not, you'll keep the hearing open for as long as you feel necessary for if somebody wants to come from the from the public and talk, and at that point, you close it. All right. And I'd like to say, self-generation, before you read it, it's already going on in the township. You see people but who are... Let's, let's hold a comment. Okay. <clears throat> Small solar is defined as is defined as is defined as an entity, I think we have an error there, that owns or hosts on its premises an electric generation facility that produces electricity for the owner's consumption and is not commercial use in nature. Solar panels are permitted without a zoning permit provided they are attached to the roof of a building do would not exceed 120% of the average yearly personal or property use and do not exceed the maximum height permitted in the applicable zoning district. Solar panels that are ground mounted are permitted with a zoning permit provided they do not exceed the total square footage of the roof area existing on buildings on the parcel and or do not exceed 100% 120% of the average yearly personal or property use. Ground mounted solar panels must be located in the side or rear yards subject to all setback and height requirements in the applicable zoning district. And then we list the different sections of our zoning resolution that this definition gets inserted into. There's the agricultural district, single family residence district, R1A single family, and R1B single family, B1 business district, and industrial district. I'm gonna cut you off, you started to I was going to say, people, you'll notice that people are doing this all over the township. You see brown, both brown mounted and roof mounted solar um, um, arrays. And this, and we're just codifying it now. And um, yeah, that's all I want to say. It's already being done. Um, that's all I want to say. There's one other thing that I can't remember. Um, I appreciated hearing it again. We hadn't heard it before as it was being developed, or I had. Um, and um, when I was listening to you read it, um, I heard you say small solar, and then I didn't hear the, the qualifier self-generation, which of course we understand small solar to be defined as anything under 50 megawatt, very different than self-generation. So I'm just wanting to confirm that this uh, piece of uh, zoning code that you're looking to adopt will clearly say solar self-generation, small solar self-generation. 
Is that um, is that an accurate understanding uh, um, of the word? The head the heading of the definition. I may not have read all of it. Solar parenthesis self generation parenthesis. Okay. And I and though we popularly and at least in our discussions of this township, we've been calling big solar like Kingwood and small solar like utility still solar small. I don't think there there is a definition besides this colloquial one we have for small solar. This is defining it. They've defined it here. Small solar is defined as an entity that owns and hosts a, on its premises an electric generation facility that produces electricity for its own consumption. So yeah. even though we have a popular understanding of small solar, is, it's only our little. Yes, and I would just note that there is a legal definition of small solar, which I think you may be aware, that defines it as anything less than 50 megawatts. And that legal definition was initially referenced when this discussion about this whole piece began. I would not accept that as the legal definition. That's what your attorney said. <laughs> says that, attorney says that anything over 50 megawatts, megawatts uh, is subject to approval by the Ohio Power Siting Board. It doesn't say that anything else is called small solar. It seems different from my memory of a previous meeting. Um, I think that came up at a zoning commission meeting. Yes. Yes. So at, at a previous zoning commission meeting, I would clarify. I would agree that I don't. I don't believe it's a legal def, that, that's a legal definition of small solar. Okay. If anybody would like to bring forth evidence. I think it, if it was, it would fall. It was sort of like, what is agro-tourism? And we're just yeah. all over the map. Even okay. though there are... Fred, do you know anything about Well, I have a couple of comments on this. And one is that in the few discussions that I've read about um, Small and large and medium how are all according to the speaker as the speaker defines it during their conversation saying I want to talk about solar that's only produced on my farm or I want to talk about solar that is within the jurisdiction of the township. Well now that's still small compared to I want to talk about solar that is way bigger than you're allowed to legislate in your township. Well then now it's over 50 megawatts. And somebody else might say, well, 100 megawatts is a fairly small project for our company. We, we only do things that are three and 400 megawatts. So I'm saying it depends on the speaker in part as to, to define who they're, what, what size project they're talking about. Mm -hmm. I, uh, but aside from that, my own objection to the language of this is that it went to the regional, the Green County Regional Planning Commission they sent it back to the Zoning Commission saying there is an error in the way you have phrased this. You have said the word as defined, and then you said the word as defined. And you said, read it tonight. Yes, and all right. And I, then, I think it, it should be amended. And they recommended to the Zoning Commission, the local Zoning Commission, the Township Zoning Commission, that they amend. The, the, the Township Zoning Commission read this um, at the meeting and said, yeah, we made a little extra language there and we should, we should correct our presentation of what we're trying to say. And yet here it is coming to you with the same confusing little phrase in it. I, I was hoping that there would be a um, grammatical correction of this proposal so that it wouldn't continue to be a little trip up for some of us who obsess about uh, language. Trustee Hollinger, could, I, we can, speak we can do it could today. I speak to this? Yes. I, I, did, I was at the meet, I recorded the minutes for the zoning hearing when this happened. Super. First, I have the letter from RPC, which says nothing about amending the, the text. It says the full commission voted to recommend approval of the resolution. There's nothing about amending any text. That's the letter from the RPC. 
Okay. Second, se let me let me finish this and then we'll. Second, I have the the actual text of the amendment or the insertion approved by the zoning commission, and it does not include that typo. Okay. Okay. Super. I have that in front of me. Oh, so, he, from, so he's not been given the corrected copy to read. I don't somehow. know where that copy came from. I what can, I have I can, in front of me does I not can clear that up. I bet I have two copies on my computer. So <laughs> I just I wanted to put that that's what this is what yeah. came from the zoning commission. That's what I have in front yeah. of me. So in response, I was at the regional planning commission meeting and pointed out my objection at that time to the way the wording was actually done in error. And they said at the meeting, yes, this should be corrected. I don't remember now whether they said, we hereby vote that we want you to do that. But I remember them saying, yes, we'll send it back with a word uh, that they should correct that. I'm, I'm just stating that the letter that they returned yeah, with their I'm, ruling says nothing about an amendment. Yeah, I'm, so. kind of, I'm surprised about that. Yes, I take full responsibility. Or the grammatical error. Well, I was just yeah. puzzled that it seemed like the zoning commission was not following through on their commentary at the meeting, which was to correct that wording. And she said, yeah, they did. Cool. I, I, I just scratched off of my copy. Uh, what's our procedure? <laughs> can, can we? Vote on this tonight, and it goes into the mm -hmm. okay. Goes into the uh, code. I have a question. Yes. We have small solar, which is what we're working on, or residential solar. What I'm thinking of. I mean, it's small. It wouldn't generate more than a quarter of a megawatt, or I don't know how much it would, you know, potentially. You had a a large farm operation, you might have three lots of the barn surface and you could have okay. more than a normal residential installation. All right, well, I'll put some residential. Okay, so that's what we're calling small solar. And then you've got over 50, and that's obviously a whole another animal. Are we working on what's in between? They're going to. No, they have been. They yes. have been. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know whether it was in process or not. Yeah, they, 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 they passed this one at the last zoning commission meeting and they began the discussion. Yeah. And they, I don't know what their process is going to be about vetting all the different, um, you know, controversies or... Are they working with regional planning boilerplate? Procedure that was that was distributed. They've been provided it, but it's not clear. Um, it's not clear to me in the discussions that I have seen that they're using that as a, a starting point. Yeah. They're using it as a piece of information, mm -hmm. but they may not be used. There was some commentary by at least one of the zoning commission. Well, before we even look at that template. They, that particular person said they wanted to see why it should be considered at all in as a activity that occurs within the township. That was one person's opinion that I don't need to read the template. I, I need to figure out why we should even consider it mm -hmm. at, with any, what, with whatever regulations might be associated. Yeah, that's legitimate. Well, that was my impression of one person's commentary. Mm -hmm. There was no vote or anything, it was just commented. Mm -hmm. However, in the months leading up, they made it clear that as soon as they were done considering temporary use and self-generated solar, then they begin the process of this medium solar, I'll call it, just to confuse us. Mm -hmm. So then that comment took me by surprise. And that my comment no the comment he made last time that it might not even be considered when we'd all been you might have been present at that meeting and heard some of the commentary i may have misrepresented it so if i know no you, you didn't yeah. um <clears throat> am i right cedarville and xenia township have adopted mm -hmm. uh, cedarville is basically conditional use 
they, they, they don't have much language at all. They're just, it'll just be considered conditional use in a couple different districts. They don't give any standards or guidelines. I think they have something there around in their zoning Fair. resolutions. Cedarville, I mean. Yeah. And well, my main question is, have those townships, you sort of answered, used uh, regional planning's guideline? When's the next selling commission meeting? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. I won't be there. Okay. So, any other discussion of this? Anyone want to make a motion to adopt it? I so move. I second. And I assume that means deleting the second <laughs> set is defined. is defined as an entity rather than so take out as is defined. Well, hold, hold on for a second. If Cindy has the actual approved language, we don't have to wordsmith this document that has the incorrect language. We don't need to bring this up to that language. We just have to approve that language. Okay. I, I have what Carrie Smith provided the zoning commission as the actual. Will you, will you read the first sentence? Uh, small solar parentheses self-generation is defined as solar panels and associated facilities with a single interconnection to the electrical grid and designed for or capable of operations at an aggregate capacity of less than 50 megawatts. It's very different. That's very different. Uh, oh. Thank you. See that? Fred. We, we need, need to reread this. <laughs> and this is my only copy on Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Fred. Small solar self-generation is defined as solar panels and associated facilities with a single interconnection to the electrical grid and designed for or capable of operations at an aggregate capacity of less than 50 megawatts and that produces electricity exclusively for consumption on the property on which it is generated. Solar panels are permitted without a zoning permit provided they are attached to the roof of a building do not exceed 120% of the average yearly personal or property use and do not exceed maximum height permitted in the applicable zoning district. Solar panels that are ground mounted are permitted with a zoning permit provided they do not, with a zoning permit, provided they do not exceed the total square footage of roof area existing on permitted buildings on the parcel and or do not exceed 120% of the average yearly personal or property use. Ground mounted solar panels must be in the side or rear yards subject to all setback and height requirements in the applicable zoning district. <clears throat> Different wording, but the same Same function, same effect. So, do I hear motions? Uh, apparently, there's discussion before. Well, we can have discussion after a motion. I have that Marilyn just made, Trustee Moyer made the motion and Mr. Moulter seconded, so there, there has been a motion made. Okay. Any further discussion? Fred? Oh, did you want to say something? You, you Go ahead. Um, I, I, I'm just a stickler. The part that it says 120%, they don't say a generation capacity of no more than 120% of the yearly. And, and, it doesn't say that, uh, it just says 120% of your yearly use. It doesn't say the generation capacity of that facility is no more than 120% of your yearly use. 
And uh, that, I think, is part of the regulations that uh, the utility company on the Ohio Power Signing Board allowed. But it's a, it's, it's a capacity of your, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, I, it's just my stickler about the way that is phrased. It doesn't say it's the capacity. I don't exactly remember exactly how that particular phrase goes. You say, you, you, you say it twice. One is, the second time is in relationship to whether it's a ground mount or not. But the first time, could you read that one little phrase? Solar panels and associated facilities with a single interconnection to the electrical grid and designed for are capable of operations at an aggregate capacity of less than 50 megawatts that and that produce electricity exclusively for consumption on the property on which it is generated. Solar panels are permitted without a zoning permit provided they are attached to the roof of a building, do not exceed 120% of the average personal, yearly personal and property use, and do not exceed the maximum height permitted in the applicable zoning district. So you would suggest that the last sentence say do not exceed generating capacity 120 percent of the average year well that would be my i mean i think i think the zoning commission was clear that this is a regulation that's partly related to the utility company and so they wouldn't necessarily have to have all the phrases that they do but for me it was just i yes and it would if we were making that change it would make sense to repeat it the next time in the next paragraph where we say 120 percent. I and think so. If, if you did make that change, I think that would be repeated in the next sentence about capacity. Does someone want to make that amendment? We'll just vote on it as amended. If I knew the proper procedure, I would. Um, um, I mean, we don't have to start over. We have, you know, we're, we're, this body is working our way through it to get to an agreement that we're, that we're going to pass. Does my suggestion I would like change the meaning of that? It doesn't change the meaning at all. No, I like, no. Okay. I'm fine with the... Um, I think we can just pencil it in and, and just approve it. My okay. understanding from yeah. Carrie's recommendation Carrie's comments at the meeting, you can approve it as is, you can amend it, or you can reject it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, sure. I move that we approve the language with this one amendment that we put, um, change, exceed the generation. Do not exceed 120% of the generating capacity. The generating capacity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exceed generating capacity, not exceed of generating the, capacity. Of the average yearly personal. So the, gener the terms generating capacity goes before 120 percent. That wouldn't make sense. It does not exceed, exceed generating capacity of. Okay. Or not, not, not even of. Does not exceed generating capacity 120 percent of the average yearly. Grammatically, I don't believe that's accurate, but okay. I mean, if that's how you would word it, that's... Do not exceed generating capacity. Do not exceed 120% of the generating, 120% generating capacity of the average you'll use. Okay. Is that a suggested? That's, I'm trying to, one well, word's missing. Yes. See if that's what, they, what you intend to say. There's no what you say. I, I, I think then, I was wrong. I think that... Let, let me read it one more time. Solar panels are permitted without a zoning permit, provided they are attached to the roof of a building, do not exceed 120% generating capacity of the average yearly personal or property use. That sounds like super. Oh, no. So you've yeah, moved and you've seconded motion. that motion. One more comment? Yes. Um, because it's my understanding the Zoning Commission is going to consider what, in this group, we have been calling medium solar? Or utility-grade solar. Utility you're, solar. You're less not just using 50, it yourself, you're selling. Less than 50 megawatts. Yeah. And that that is their next thing. 
I wonder if the trustees would want to clarify the way we had them calling it small solar self-generation. Just to keep it clear. That is the title. That is the title. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now I'm happy. <laughs> Wait till we get to the, the hard <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, again. This this was supposed to be the easy one. Are we voting? Any other comments? <laughs> Not I. Please call the roll. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the zoning resolution addition for small solar self generated generation as amended from the Zoning Commission recommendation. I'll fill in the complete text. Um, Ms. <coughs> Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Hollison. Yes. Motion approved. May I ask one quick question? Are we going to additionally uh, uh, appropriate funds to be used specifically for a, a, um, a, a solar inspector? I mean, somebody's got to keep track of this 125 percent of use per year. Utility company will. Yes. They're about the zoning inspector. They're very clear about it. It's the utility company. But who's going who's gonna to check with the utility company whether it's being exceeded? Believe me, the utility company will be conferring with the consumer. And it would, yeah, it will be of no use for the, um, it will be of no use for the consumer to do that because they won't be able to sell their excess and they probably will never be able to approach 120% anyway. Fred is the expert. Yeah, Fred? Uh, to begin the discussion, from my point of view, I am not the expert. Okay. I'm a person with some solar panels, but the utility company will call you on it if you make more than 120%. It's their business. You are interfering with their business if you make more than 120%. Oh, yeah, that's true. And they know how much you make. And they know what your yearly average is. And they give it to you every month. Or at least to me. They say, July last year, that's what you produced. Every month since then, that's what you produced. Uh, this July, this is what you produced. And this is what you owe me. What do you mean? Well, you never produce enough stock, though. I mean, 120% is like the ideal. It doesn't include any sunny day, uh, uh, cloudy days, any rainy days, any snowy days, uh, any days with hmm. a pile of snow on your uh, solar panels. It only includes the maximum capacity that you could do if you had 365 sunny days. Oh, wow. And that's your 120%. Wow. But you never have the 365 days in, at least not yet. Uh, I don't think the township trustees have approved that for Miami Township, that we are allowed to have 365 days straight of sunny days. We can't get a unanimous vote on that, Fred, unfortunately. <laughs> you're, you're off topic. I realize it's controversial. With climate change, we might, we might get there. I might get there. With climate change, we might get something like that in terms of the heat. Anyways, I'm just saying, yeah, there will be people involved in watching that, but it'll usually be a computer program at the public utility company. Well, that's good to know, because I didn't want to have to fund that position. Although solar is one of my favorite topics, we do have an agenda with other items. Uh, and I look forward to hearing more from the Zoning Commission on this. So are you, are you going to close the hearing now? Uh, clearing, clearing is, <laughs> the hearing is closed. The clearing is hosed. At 5.37. Thank you. Yes. Uh, May I ask a question? About fire department? No, like what happens now with this? this how, how, how do we, okay, we'll talk, we'll talk about it later. Where does it go next? Okay. Let's Wait for the next. Okay. Uh, fire department report. I can be brief. <laughs> um, we had uh, during two week period, seventeen EMS calls. That's down a little bit because of the medic issues that I'll bring up. 
uh, 11 fire we had <clears throat> requested mutual aid, one EMS, one fire we received five EMS mutual aid, four of those were due to the medics being out, um, and then one fire. Uh, Justin Turner, thankfully, will be coming back to work on the 21st, so that is fantastic. Um, just more of an FYI, uh, Gavin and Cassidy's OPNF paperwork is all the stuff that I had to send them is basically done. Although we found one page where 20, 20 the four was cut off and I had to. What's OP in a police and fire or, uh, pension? Mm -hmm. um, so I have to get a new copy of that. Um, Gavin and Peyton officially start their paramedic program tomorrow morning. I hope they're ready. Um, they are actually, but. Uh, Medic 81 and Medic 82, as you guys know, is uh, are, they are both out of service, and we are borrowing Spring Valley Township's Reserve Medic. Um, thankful to uh, Chief Cross for that. Um, as far as repair on that, Medic 81 is a big electrical charging issue, and those become nightmares when they rear their ugly head in an ambulance because there's a lot of electrical stuff going on there. Um, the inexpensive solution to that is uh, is to put a battery switch in it like the engines have so i believe that's the route we're going to go rather than spending lord knows how many umpteen hours trying to find this issue yeah <laughs> uh, yeah uh, save some money somewhere on maintenance uh medic 82 i you guys have heard us talk in the past about the liquid spring system which is all the suspension in the box area and is nothing but a nightmare. Well, its pump is probably gone out and you can't drive it when the liquid spring system is not working. Unfortunately, that's a really, really, the company is a pain in the backside to deal with. They're not helpful with their customers or mechanics. Um, and with Dave Eamon going out, uh, Dave hated working on the system as it was, but um, we found where uh, uh, a company in Clark County that would would deal with it and they have experience working on so that's where it is. Um, so we took it up on Friday so they could start on it first thing today, but I haven't heard anything. They, they didn't give any rough time? No, it's no. down to when parts are available, which is usually a pain dealing with the company, um, and then their $500 a gallon hydraulic fluid. Mm -hmm. That can only be theirs, yeah. And you can only buy theirs. Did you tell them to FedEx to park overnight? Oh, they'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how that goes. I'll I'll let, when I know something, I'll let I'll let you know that. But um, the Life Pack Thirty Five contract was signed for that uh, finance purchasing, and then I forwarded a copy of that to excuse me to the fiscal officer just for her records. And that's the defibrillator? Correct, yes. Um, so that's done over three annual payments. I forgot the exact amount, 19000 Yeah, forgot the exact amount. Um, and then, no, it's okay. And then, um, uh, in good news, I have a part-time employee who is a firefighter EMT that I, uh, Casey Flora, um, who I would like to um, actually be able to hire him pending physical and drug screen. Normally I put that off two weeks until we had this physical and drug screen and stuff done before I put it to you guys, but I actually want to kind of try and fast track him because we need him now. Uh, so if I can have a motion for that, that would be great. So in the past we've had a formal resolution. That, that's that always necessary. up in the air as to whether or not a resolution or not. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there seems to be confusion about it. And the last thing I was told, no, we don't need a resolution. So uh, I don't know. Um, I'm sorry. What was his qualifications again? He's a firefighter EMT, and he would be a part time. And where's he live? Enon. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he lives in Enon and works for Springfield Township and Harrison Township and he will be resigning from one of those departments that I won't name. How many hours would you expect to get from him? Probably about 32. 
Part-time hire of Casey Flora, firefighter EMT, pending physical and drug screen. <clears throat> Mr. Mucha. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion to approve. That's all I have. Any questions? No, sir. I don't. Cemetery report. Good evening. Uh, since the last meeting, we have had one burial in the prairie, a full burial in the natural prairie area. Kind of come at a lull right now, but it'll pick up. Uh, I got the road gravel if you haven't been up to see it. What do you think? Looks nice. It'll we'll need some more gravel later, but yeah. for now it tightened it up pretty good. You can travel on it. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry, sorry. This is the road gravel around yes, the grove? In the the Oak Grove area. You can now leave it in the rain. Mm -hmm. I take that sign down or leave the sign up still. I, I'd like to keep the sign. It may be for now. It may be problematic. I, I'd like to keep the traffic out of the right. prairie. But if they need to go back, you know, they can drive through it. But we can consider the walking path the, the grass figure eight and the drive straight through. I don't know. Well, I'll, leave be I'll leave it for now, but if we need yeah. to do something, a burial back there or something, I usually take the hearse back there. It's a long way to pull that cart. Back where? To the Oak Grove. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I, uh, cars, in my opinion, cars can go back and park back there on the drive or the drive all the way around if, if there's okay. that many of them. Right. That okay. was the whole idea. Okay. Um, I, I'm talking about the prairie section not to have yeah i, yeah, I don't 20 want to cars back right. in, in there no, yeah. no, we, we can pull the cart from the yeah. entrance yeah. in there it's just a long way to pull it to the back oh heaven yes yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's the whole idea but right. grab it and i'm going to work on the water leak this week and get it back up yeah. what's going okay. on with that sooner the better so there's a the water leak in the cemetery yeah one of the one of the spigots you reported this time in my opinion, if it's a, a big enough deal, I would just pull the pull those ticket. Eliminate that one. Yeah, I, I thought about that. I wanted to ask that. Mm -hmm. Because one? we got the one. Our, which one? It's the one right as you go in. The one that would be easily hit by a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. But well, I'm going to look and see what's going on there. You, you know, and you've got one halfway up the east drive, and then you've got one in the fountain. And the two out front. There's two spigots out in the traditional part too. Oh, okay. So I could just eliminate the one there by the rock. It's leaking. Is there two? I thought there was just one. No, there's, there's two. two. Hmm. There's four all together. Well, five if you count the one at the well. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I'll I'll, 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 if I'll find what the problem is, and mm -hmm. I'll just eliminate that spigot if it's going to be there. It's going to be a big deal, but if you can just. You know, I'll see what's going on. Put it in that mold on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, if I can't do all. Or weld a new part on it. Yeah. Find somebody who knows how to weld. Weld in the water. <laughs> yeah, I think that's about all I had for that. Okay. I, I have some cemetery stuff. All right. May I, may I have a floor? That's what I thought. Yes, you can have the floor. Okay. There we go. Now, those of us who've been here a long time <laughs> might remember that when I go to my yearly uh, conferences for Cemetery Association, uh -huh. I generally come back with some pearls of wisdom and ideas and to, expensive and expensive <laughs> to, make, to make things better for us. For example, our E35 was 
I saw it at one of our conferences, and I said, that's a good thing to have. Uh, the, the cart, the thing, rolling thing, that was a good thing to have. Um, and, you know, and multiple other stuff. Uh, ideas, the ground penetrating radar that we went all through the old cemetery with and found 15 un, uncharted bodies in, in unmarked graves. 70. 70? No, we didn't find yeah, 70. About 70. Okay, I, I thought it was less than that. Was that 1955? Yeah, it was back in the good old days. Okay, well, anyway, so I was at the most recent cemetery association meeting last week. 10 days ago, and uh, I sent both of you pictures of one part of the cemetery, the Spring Grove Cemetery, the largest cemetery in the state of Ohio, second largest in the United States. It, it is a new section, relatively new, it's only about two years old, of, um, of, of an, another natural section that they have that is, is solely for cremated remains, and it's in a heavily wooded area and of course, it's in Cincinnati, so it's got some changes in elevation too. But I can't tell you about that. But what they do is they take they take a, a forested, a heavily wooded area, and they just wind a, a me meandering path through it, and they sell a spot. I mean, literally a spot. A, a person would come in. Uh, they would have their ashes with them. Uh, they would they would walk that area. They would say, "Okay, I want this person to be there, or here, or there, or, or anywhere," and that's the spot where that person would then their ashes would be either scattered or put in a biodegradable container, like a salt container, a salt urn, and they'd be put right there. And what they used for a marker. I know Marilyn saw it because I showed it to you. I don't know if you saw it, Don. You've got to look at these things, man. It, it used, they use boulders that are about a foot and a half, roughly. They're not that big. They're bigger than a basketball. They're smaller than a whatever that big thing is. That for beach a, ball. It. Pardon? Beach ball. Smaller than a beach yeah, ball. Yeah, it's about, yeah, about a beach ball. And uh, they, they take one side of it, and usually they're they're rounded. They're they're usually not jagged because it's hard to put a. They put a brass plate on it that's uh, it's ten by twelve is the plate that identifies the name of the person, uh, and they they set it there, and they're just and it can be literally it could be anywhere. I mean, if it wants to be out in the middle, not. I mean, here's the here's the little gravel path that goes around. But you might be, you know, somebody might want it right there. Somebody might want it right in the center. Somebody might might want it one next to next to somebody else's. Fine, put them a foot apart. That's okay too. There's so many. There's so much space, even in a in a small spot. Now, now this particular case is this is the Oak Grove Cemetery here. This is the part behind the Oak Grove that, that has all the has all the pine trees in it. It's pretty heavily pretty heavily covered for about 75 feet back from the, from, the, or from the fence. After 75 feet for another close oh, to... What, what is that? Where's the Oak Grove? Oak Grove's down here. This is the driveway. Is the road. Road. Wait, is, so you're suggesting here's no a tree, new... No tree, no tree, no tree, no tree. A new area on in our cemetery where's on the, this model. Where's yes. 68? Up here. Down here. I don't understand the whole diagram. Here's, here's the prairie. You're talking about the, the real pine trees behind Yeah, I know that, but what's all that other stuff up there? Well, this That's is the rest of our area. This is, we own okay, up okay. here. And that, that wiggly thing you have is somebody else's cemetery? No, that's ours. That's our. Uh, well, that's my idea of things to, this is an idea that I have that we put a meandering path through all those pine trees and establish one of these cremated, okay, these natural cremated. Okay. Garden. And then there's land beyond that? Yes. Yeah, there's there's, oh. a, there's another. There's two land. Mostly. 254 feet. Hmm? 254 feet. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, so that's future. I had no I'm idea. Gonna, I'm going to get away with future. But anyway, the, the nice part about this is this path, if you, if you design it well, it, you don't need it to have to be this fancy here, I think. But there's so much, because there's not plots laid out, there's not graves, there's not. You know, you own this. You own this. Don't get over my mind. You can put, you can put these boulders. You can put them, stack them up. You can put a bazillion of these things. A bazillion is a lot. It's like a one with 
a lot of zeros on the end. That's a zillion. You could put a bazillion in here, charge a reasonable amount, and you could have a, a, an income source for not a whole lot of money. Uh, you know, it would take you know, it would take a little exploration and and on how much it would cost to to clear the undergrowth. You got to get all the undergrowth out so people can walk without running into tree limbs or anything. Um, maybe above your pay grade, you, we might have to find somebody to do it. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff back there, and then to, to lay it out. I just want somebody to say, eh, this is not a bad idea. Let's just explore it. I'm not looking for a rubber stamp here and this, this open it up. not a bad idea, let's explore it. <laughs> He's just trying to get rid of me. Okay. Thank I you. so move. Thank what, you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about that this? That's a good idea. That this chart. I don't know. That's something from where That appears to be left behind from YSDC and they probably shouldn't have left it up there. Because oh. <laughs> it. <laughs> Meryl, is that your stuff? I was not party to oh. those meetings. They were interviews. Oh, okay. Um, Jerome. So cremation, I, I work on the committee with the uh, Prairie uh, Cemetery. And part of our research has been that cremation is actually pretty detrimental to the natural uh, in that the, it becomes in some ways toxic um, when cremation occurs. And there is a process to clean it up before you scatter it on the ground. Um, but there's, you know, I think I remember two or $300 to do that. Um, so the idea that you just sprinkle ashes and it's good for nature and it's good for, it's actually not. Uh, and uh, we could do a presentation on that at some point. I'd like to. Is there just a, could you send me a reference to sure. that? Sure. Because I have scattered ashes quite a few places. Well, now this is not scattered. I know. I understand. Okay. All right. Dan's just going to try to correct it. <laughs> but didn't you say it would be in a disposal, uh, a container that mm -hmm. would? I agree. Control? But it, this is underground. And underground. Okay. Yeah, I just think that it should be explored before. Yeah. Yeah. Something like this is great idea. The idea that you can just pick a spot and put your boulder down, um, but not stack a month billion high. I don't know. Bazillion, not a billion. No, you said billion. No, I said bazillion. Because yeah. I had always intended cremation as my choice until I really been provided new information about it. And. People are going to continue to be cremated, but because I saw your literature, it also is fossil fuel intensive. Right. It's, yeah. So cremation takes a lot of work. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but people. I mean, solar cremation. Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Yes, could be. I think. Be but it's going to be more than 50 megawatts. <laughs> no, no, no. No, oh, no. Uh, it would no. be use parabolic mirror oh. to cook the. To burn. Um, I would like to say that the picture you sent me was lovely. <clears throat> I really like the idea. Um, if we could make it look like that, I mean, I, I, I have to walk back to myself and see what it would look like. Um, I, when I took the tour of the um, the Glen, the, the traditional part, and there's the, the original part, the African American tour. It made me want to be buried there because I walked through and there's a group of people, there were these large, gorgeous trees, and here's a family here, and that family was related to this family, and then these people all came up in the 50s, and those people came up in the early 1900s, and I thought, wow, that's something that, that the natural, the prairie people don't really have is this almost storybook kind of thing with, with these stones that tell a story of you know birth and when you were how long you lived and who you related to so um I kind of longed for something like that when you showed me that picture I could see these stones with very almost like I was here I'm no longer here but I was here and mm -hmm. this stone will be here so I liked that if we could make it um 
as aesthetically pleasing or, 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 or try as, as whatever that I saw in that picture. Well, It'll that's undis I mean, that's as close to undisturbed as you could get, mm -hmm. other than the gravel drive and cleaning up so you, you can walk back in there. I mean, you cannot walk in this area right now because the, the growth of the tree branches and the, yeah, the, yeah. you know, it's just too much. It heavy. almost sounds like it could look almost like a pine forest. Or yeah. Is there any way and that, and there's a nice bed of pine needles. Yeah, there. I like there's, it's a pine tree. Um, and, and then, but I also, and we talked about this on our committee, is that Chris's funeral, <laughs> Chris's cemetery empire continues. <laughs> and um, it's already, um, hope we get everything done. We've hired somebody now, I think found a good person to help us with the prairie. And um, did some good work out there this week that I'll talk about later. Um, so I'm just, have my eye on, and I know it's a, it's a consistent um, revenue generator. And, and, but it does, the expansiveness, you know, makes me think about future staff and things, so that's all. And if you, There's not much staff on, on, a, on a natural prairie, you know, granted we had to hire this gentleman to, to clean up the mistakes that poor, it, it's it's not no, just I mean, it's just, no no I don't think I don't think it's just mistakes I don't like to think no I don't even think it's primarily mistakes I think it's management just like you 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 could sit here and say well uh, uh, a um, traditional cemetery doesn't take much much maintenance but here we are with a big lawn contract a big spraying contract yeah. a big repairing stones contract a big um, I don't know what else drilling a well contract. So it's I don't I don't I don't look at what we're doing out there as because of mistakes. I, I look at it as of course just just natural uh, maintenance. And I like as we go. I just constantly keep thinking that had we sterilized the ground before we planted, we wouldn't have a lot of the things that we're dealing with now. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. About back to your presentation here, what what label would you use for this kind of get a marketer to do it. Yeah. Well um, Spring Grove calls it the uh, Woodland Walkway. Okay. They also advertise it as a natural this is only cremains. This is there are no bodies back. Okay, there. in the in the woodland walkway, mm -hmm. uh, does does their model allow for a family to have a designated area? You know, like six feet by six feet, or no? There, are, there. You know, it's it's wherever you want to be, so and if Ma and Pa want to be here and. Junior wants to be here, but it, there are no delineated lots. Mm -hmm. So they talk about, I mean, over time, they might, you might have a problem with density of, of rocks. Once you get to a bazillion, then you move to the, to the back. Okay. The only reason that, that I didn't really include the back is because there's about a, I don't know, there's about a, Two or three, maybe two or three acre. There's like a little open space where there's no trees. You have about back 60 there. feet, 70 feet wide, the, yeah. the length there, and then you got another row of pines. Yeah, and then you got, then you, there's a fair amount of pines here, and then there's behind it, but you've got this area here where there's there's nothing. I'm not What's sure. What's in why. the not used section? Pines. Yeah, pines. Huh. More, more, more pines. pines. But huh. that's that's getting pretty far back now. Yeah, uh, I, I just was wondering how to walk. Yeah, that, that's a long walk. Back I've there. always stopped at Oak Grove because I thought that was the end of our cemetery. Because oh, no. <laughs> there would be there would be a drive that's similar to the one that we've got along. Here's the existing drive, and we put a one that would go into the back, so you could get vehicles and deliveries and take the stone back the boulders. I mean, because you can't just walk back there with a 200-pound boulder, even though it's not that big. You know, a little, little baby parking lot there. Oh, no. 
Oh, guys, I, we don't have to do it exactly like they did it. If, you know, no. if they're, you know, like you said, there are families that want to be together and everybody can be imaginative. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you them. can do it that way. Yeah. An area. So, Marilyn, you said you had some something else to report. Oh, I was just doing it. It's nothing much, and I was going to do it under the committee reports. Oh, okay. Um, now we go on. So, what you're looking for now is just report? a general could I, could I feel of temperature. Well, you have something else on sanitary? Yeah. Interested in grape growers this year? She called twice and asked me. Um, I, I know Clifton has expressed an interest, and the last I heard, they had a fairly good fund that they might be able to tap. Uh, you let might me ask. find out. When let me. I'll, let I'll me call you tomorrow. Okay. But not for good, not this year. I don't think this year, no. no. Okay. It's that's, a little bit. Yeah. Um, before we move on to, to road, if we could, um, relatively soon, if you don't mind, uh, Daniel, yes, um, if you could ask Brandon to spend five or ten minutes and burn off the grasses that I asked for on the sidewalk here, yeah, and in the gravel now that it's started to come up even more than when I asked a while ago, yeah. so. We'll take care of it this week. Okay. We'll be here sometime late in the week tomorrow anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. So you're, you're equating uh, landscaping at the station with graves? Cemetery? Never mind. <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> oh, no. um, road report. Yes, sir. Um, I plan on starting in the ditches again as soon as I get there with all the other cemeteries. That's the plan. They're not that bad. I got, got a bit to do, but we'll be back on the ditches if you want. Well, yeah. The road I mean, I went through them last, yesterday, so. Yeah, sniffing them. They, they could use yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I'll be starting as soon as I can. We'll drive around the village and we'll look at some of the public I have, firms. Um, and that's it. Other we have to clean up over by the firehouse in Clifton. They got a festival next week, this weekend. So they do some cleanup. Mm -hmm. That'll be that'll be a quick half a day job. Mm -hmm. We'll get in and out, get it done. You have any road comments? Uh, I thought everything looked uh, very nice. Uh, I hadn't seen North River, and I thought they did a good job there. Um, oh, the shipping head yeah, and my stuff for yeah, a trip Yeah, and Arbison, I had seen that one earlier. Um, I, I think we made some good decisions this year. Um, probably won't need a whole lot next year. A maybe lot of maybe fall goes too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Any paving possible next year? It just it depends on how bad the winter is maybe, or what, what might pop up, but I think so far we're in good shape. Okay, good. You, you haven't broken any more, have you? <laughs> Yeah. Works just fine. Thank you. It's, it's still shiny. I know. <laughs> Keep it that way. Yeah. Okay. Fiscal officer. Um, okay, I don't have much else other than what we already talked about, uh, except that uh, how long have we been in this new building? Three years. Three three years. Yeah. It's, we we moved in in a November. So three and a half years. Yeah, I would think we're coming up on the floor. Um, yeah, well, there's still a fair amount of mail that's still going to the Quarry Street address. Um, although they've, the post office has just been nice and still give it to us. Mm -hmm. But now it's gotten confusing because we're getting Chappelle's mail. And so I've had, anyway, um, now that there's actually another entity in that place. So I'm just trying to go through and change our mailing address and all those places that are still mailing to 225 Quarry Street, and some of them need our letter, it has to be official, and our letterhead, and I don't know where our letterhead is, so if you have that, yeah. either a, a copy, email me a copy, or if we have print, if that's all you have, um, a few of those would be great, so okay. I can hopefully, okay. you know, you can take care of that. Okay. I'm, uh, I've been telling them when they have the old address, I've been up to me. Thank you, thank you very much, appreciate it. That's, that's you, you've been doing any computer working in there? Yes, sir. Cemetery? Yes, sir. But I still do. Okay, good. So you're working on it all right? I mean, yeah. still remember October yes, Great. I actually looked a couple of things up last week. I didn't yeah. did go on this one. 
Yeah, now I know what it's Fontanus. Thanks for I, I was like, what does this note mean? Oh, that's the website. Okay, yeah. Now, for every in Pontum, which is our our cemetery software, for every record we put, if who's there, we have a paper trail, right? We have copies of deeds. That's the only paper trail that we have. What other paper trail are you thinking of? Well, it's in the ledger. Uh, well, they put it in the the ledger. we have the place, we have the name. What ledger? That, the book I've been reading or whatever it is that you had me been going through that book. Oh, that's from the 50s. Well, that's so are we back on, <laughs> are we back on cemetery report or yeah. what? It sounds we, like we are. But we have that backed up <coughs> like four places. <coughs> That information is not going anywhere. Okay. We have what backed up? The, the data. For the Who is where? Oh, like electronically, it's backed up. Yes, we, we have a we have a service carbonite that backs up. We have a two terabyte hard drive that backs up. Um, there's an internal backup in the software itself, which I periodically back it up. Uh, I have two thumb drives that I back up. Uh, to both of those as as a um, as a, re as a redundancy. I mean, and if you go to that great cemetery, this guy, we can find all that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the paper copies are all in the deed. I mean, in the deeds and anything that it, um, that accompanied it, like like a copy of the check. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that should be. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the fiscal officer? I don't think so. I have something for this question. question. Okay. Well, I guess it'd be for the board, and then maybe it would trickle down to the fiscal officer. What are the chances we jump into the 21st, 22nd century, or 21st century and accept credit cards for cemetery payments? That's an interesting question. I mean, Lots of cemeteries do, and this is not this is not unique to us. And well, people ask for them. I mean, the time that I worked for Dan, you know, a lot of people asked if they could. So, would you tell them? Are, are you asking the? Would, you tell them? would I tell them? I would said cash, buddy. Cash check money. <laughs> so that's right. What you're well, asking? I think you're asking the. Oh, the uh, yeah, I worked in the. It worked in the forties and fifties, but you know. So you're asking if the township should. I don't know if you're asking a fiscal officer to, to get some sort of device or whatever they do and that all to, to, to do that or heck, why don't we accept credit cards for zoning fees and well, zoning hearings sure. and yeah. um, mm -hmm. whatever else it is that we sell. Do we, we sell could. anything else? Nope. So uh, what my thing is, when we don't have a township administrator, so when somebody has a great idea, so let's do credit cards. Okay, I move that we do credit cards. Then where does it go? Do we? Fiscal officer. So I mean, the fact that we even have like a link on this on our site, like they could pay. It, it sounds like and then we'd have to link it to. Well, so not just for them to enter their credit card info, but you mean that we would actually take a credit card and have a device that we would swipe it. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. We have an old. Yeah, we do. And I mean, I guess Dan would have that. The piece right? of paper it would be like, <laughs> like that. I mean, those certain a lot of like you know small vendors do that, like street fair. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, right. Those the things little... are, well, it can attach it to your phone. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Assuming that if we're a public entity and we're keeping track of things, it's it's not it's not as yeah. much yeah. as like the, the little. Wait, Maurice, did you say entity or entity. enemy? Entity. entity. <laughs> um, <laughs> Their services like PayPal. Yeah. Yeah, I just. It, I, I'm it sure it's not. not I'm sure it's not rocket it's not. Excuse me. I'm sure it's not rocket science. I'm just saying. Are we putting this on the plate right now? And she's still catching up with stuff. But you're saying. No, I'm just throwing this out for the future. And. Um, Give us something to think about, but if you don't put it on your maybe list. list. Okay, it's not going to be on the front burner, but that's an interesting thing to add. I'm just trying to think of what else it would affect, banking wise. Um, Zoning fees, hearing fees. Yeah, just look into our account. I mean, it's certainly, it's certainly possible something that we can do with that. We felt that would be beneficial. Just yes. trying to be customer friendly. Yeah, that's I assume if we had a, a zingy thing, Square Dan would have it on his phone. I mean, is that what we would 
And, uh, I don't know, maybe. But if you keep the if you keep the taxpayers happy, and they'll vote for the next election. There's always a next election. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure that's a motivator. <laughs> Well, well, for me, they'll experience you as up to date. They will experience you as well, up to date. Maybe even on the leading edge. Oh, wouldn't that be good? That would be a chip in our finger that we just buy our cemetery plot with a thumbprint or something. Oh, well, I have the sense that we can move on to standing committee reports. I have nothing to report from NBRBC because I missed the meeting. Um, Green County Regional Planning? You don't want to say anything about zoning inspectors report about, you know, we're working on a oh, zoning inspector or, or anything? Uh, okay, back up. Is that green we? Nothing? What is the status of our search for a zoning inspector? Well, you're going to be in some yeah, yeah. of so tomorrow, I'm um, going to meet someone tomorrow and then get, get get two more references sent to me from Beth Township as soon as he gets to it. And um, anything else you'd like to know? We have a zoning commission meeting tomorrow night, continuing on medium solar, we'll call it. And then a triple header BZA the day after that, two agritourism um, cases and a, a, a very... Um, creative case concerning accessory dwellings. So mm -hmm. if there's a lot of detail to it, but I'm not sure we need a public meeting, but if no. you're curious about anything, I'd like to tell you about it. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, Kevin. Oh, it's my turn. If we met. Um, we've had a bit of a kerf kerfuffle over the last month or so. Uh, we've had to replace a full-time position uh, due to circumstances beyond our control. So that person left our employment. Um, she, re she resigned. And so we have hired basically two part-time people to, uh, re to one, to re it, it, changing, changing the job descriptions and the requirements, and just a little bit. It's, it's not a massive change, but um, with the amount of work that's starting to come in, we needed more than one, but less than two. But we didn't have one full time that was totally up to speed, and the part time, who once part time is almost up to speed, but she doesn't want to do work at full time. So to make a long story short got work to do but we're on the right path which is great because it was uh, very time consuming with this other problem and very little productivity uh, in, a, uh, in a department that is so small you need everybody to be pulling on the board at the same time and, and that reminds me that people are suggesting that Green County could provide a temporary zoning inspector if we don't come up with them. And when I hear you talk like that, it, that makes me think you can't handle no. supplying us. Yeah. No. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Thanks. Uh, other than that, there was a there was there was a meeting uh, in, in between last month and this month. Well, we did a couple of zoning. Uh, uh, subdivision reviews and the text amendment for Zinia Township, but I don't remember what it was because I didn't bring my form for me, but uh, it was not a, a very long agenda, uh, not like the one before where there was 10 different items about township, but Michelle took care of that. I rambled. I'm finished. Okay. Clifton Union Cemetery has not had a meeting. Yellow Springs Development Corporation. Um, they've been all consumed with um, interviews for the hiring of the new director. I recused myself from that process for reasons, and um, that's what they've been doing. So, um, 
That's all I have to report. The Green County Township Association, you may have noticed they are, they put out information about, I believe it's September 10th. Mm -hmm. uh, that meeting will be sponsored, hosted by the Green County Commission. So, uh, what did they do last year? Anyway, I'm going to make a, a, a point of going. Tell them we don't want helicopters buzzing our neighborhoods. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I said uh, that. <laughs> yes, my neighborhood half a block away. Um, GFND. GFNB. Um, that's the green. Um, Glen Forest. Glen Forest Natural, Natural Burial Area. Area. Um, I haven't been out to see the work that JT has done, and I'm not sure it's finished. Your, your wife gives great reports. He took out a whole lot of goldenrod before it went to seed. And um, goldenrod's wonderful. It's great habitat. It's great um, prairie. But it, it likes itself, and it likes to grow. And, and so if we don't want it competing with everything else, I think it's going to be um, very effective um, to take out great amounts and let other things come through. Um, so there, and the, I forget, TJ, is it? J, JT. JT. Um, they, they did a very uh, selective um, sort of pulling of the, the mustard. So they were actually mustard. looking for the natural prairie plants and they went around them mm -hmm. uh, and left those standing. So it should be a positive impact on what You said the mustard as well as the golden round? Or? It was mostly the golden round areas. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a few others. And, and they did it in such a way that when we're out there, you know, visiting our grave site, you don't see how much they actually mm -hmm. pulled. So, yeah. um, you know, we thought we would have to have science explaining to the public that this is Restoration, yeah, progress, um, but I don't think that's necessary. And did he do anything with the I, the roadways yet? He was going to start experimenting with. He was going to talk to you about that. Let's talk to him. Okay, um, okay. And I, I want to emphasize: I don't look at this as correcting things that went wrong. I look, I look at it as. Um, like going to the dentist have an annual ch checkup or semi-annual work done or something. I, I don't think it's about correcting mistakes. I think it's well, about in fact, I think we've learned over these last couple of years that most prairies have some maintenance to do, you know, regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't plant a prairie and it's, it's forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm excited about that. And I appreciate the too, if I can mention uh, the, that we're, we're carrying the dirt away instead of shoveling it, scraping the ground, because um, it looks like that'll recover much faster. So. Is, is that appears what we're doing? Is that what you did for the last one that happened this week? Yeah, is it, if, if it's a pain, no. It's more it, work, but. It's more work, but. Okay. When you leave, yeah, when you leave it there and scrape it back, you make a nice little place for invasives to hop in. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. I think it's going to have a, a big effect on the prairie. Well, we put it on plywood, and that seemed to work pretty good. It wasn't breaking the ground, but we just mashed it down. It's possible that you were um, recovering that when things got busy that it wasn't as careful. I don't know. I know he had help with people who didn't know necessarily. I don't know. Any other things about the natural area that we could tell you? No, I just, I appreciate the progress that's been made. I appreciate the volunteers that are, people like you who are helping tend. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
anything else from standing committees that aren't listed? Uh, new business. Uh, Fred Kaiser's uh, report. He will send a revised report tonight and would like to schedule a meeting this week with the board, with the trustees. Uh, so there will be some text back and forth and we'll set a date and we'll have to have 24 hour notice to tell the public and the press. Uh, this is a report on our consultants two phases that started out was uh, financial projections for the expansion of or the reorganization of the fire department personnel and then I uh, consulted more on sort of organizational health and suggestions on uh, moving forward as we've shifted from volunteer to uh, professional fire department. Uh, and that, that will, it'll, he said, well, there'll be another five years at least of sort of cultural organizational shift and how can we be more alert to that and formalize uh, change change of procedures and policies. Uh, so it's, it circulated the draft of that report and uh, he'll answer questions more formally later this week. So that'll be an open meeting or no? Open meeting. It doesn't really have to be because it's for information only, but not my I'm problem. sorry what it, it's a meeting for information only well, that's right it's not business um, well it seems to me that it would be a publicized meeting All right. your, your call. Uh, under old business we have an executive session to discuss personnel issues I have one other piece of old business yes well, it was a little old, a couple, couple weeks ago or so, I had noticed that Cornell Circle was particularly overgrown with stuff and thought that was going to be attended to. It was. It was. What, this morning? It was going to, but we got put off you know, to do something else. So it's it's on the list for this week. Mm -hmm. So is, is oh, this it's, it's the still, trimming? It's still on the list. Okay. It's still on the list. All right. Is this don't lose the list? Stuff oh. hanging over, or right. is this mowing? No, it's it's stuff. Stuff that mirrors the trimming. I love how you correct me whenever I miss say anything, but you all talk about just about as you want to. Go ahead. Uh, but this this is an extension of the road report, right? Correct. Okay. But it's old business because we already addressed it once two weeks ago. I have no further old business, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Um, I don't. I don't see a motion afterwards. Well, if we take further action, I will. It will be on video, and I'll I'll tell the newspaper. We promised action at this meeting, and I do expect we'll take action. Okay. Do uh, we need to vote on it? I would. I uh, would like to have a call the roll on going into executive session. Move and second to a move to executive session. To consider the appointment of employment dismissal discipline 
motion to motion of compensation public employee. Yes, the uh, yes. 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 The audience is. Recess at 636. Okay. 626.